Dear friends, in the present video, you will learn about chapter 8, that is motion. We recommend use of earphones for audio clarity and concentration. The lesson will be discussed in parts. Here is part 1 for you. The lessons are based on NCRT textbooks. In the present video, we will discuss about motion, that is, we will study what motion means in science, the types of motion, the terms speed and velocity, scalars, vectors, average speed, average velocity. The motion and its study is of immense importance to us in daily life. We see vehicles moving every day to transport men and material. We know the birds migrate according to the seasons. The fish swim. The blood flows through our veins and arteries, which helps sustain our life. Atoms, molecules, air, planets, stars, and galaxies are in motion. So, the study of motion is very important to us. We see motion of an object as change in its position with time. The evidence of motion may not always be direct. Sometimes it is inferred through indirect evidences. As an example, we cannot see air, but air in motion, that is wind is evident when we see the motion of the leaves and branches of the trees. The motion of a train is inferred by looking at trees or poles outside which appear to move backward and give us the information or notion that the train is in motion. We similarly cannot directly perceive motion of earth. We know earth has two different types of motions. It rotates about its axis and also revolves around the sun. The motion about the axis causes sunrise, sunset, that is day and night, whereas the revolutionary revolution around sun causes the change in seasons. Remember, an object may appear to be moving to one observer, but at rest to another. This is interesting and needs to be clearly understood in order to understand the concept of motion. Inside a train, all passengers are in motion with respect to objects outside the train, that is they all see trees moving backward and hence they are in motion with respect to the objects outside the train. However, a passenger sitting inside the same train sees his fellow passenger to be at rest. For example, if we have two passengers A and B sitting next to each other, they continue to be in same position, they do not change their position with respect to each other and hence we can say that passenger A is at rest with respect to B and B is at rest with respect to A. However, both the passengers are in motion with respect to the objects outside the train. So, same object can be in motion or can be at rest when we think of the reference. What do these observations indicate? We need to probe it. This shows that rest and motion are not absolute terms, they are relative terms. The term relative is important and we can take a few more examples for the same. The walls of a room are at rest with respect to each other. If you have a table in a room, it is at rest with respect to the door in the same room because they do not change their positions with respect to each other. 
however the walls the table the door etc they are in motion with respect to moon sun as they are continuously changing their position relative to the moon or relative to the sun some objects move along straight path while some others may follow circular path so here we are talking about the types of motions motion along a straight path is called linear motion or rectilinear motion whereas motion along a circle is called circular motion some objects rotate the such motion is called rotatory motion some objects vibrate we call it oscillatory motion like the bob of a pendulum there are some motions which are regular while others are erratic and frightening uncontrolled motions like flood hurricanes tsunami etc they cause widespread devastation the controlled motion can be of service to mankind motion of water falling from a height is used to generate hydroelectric power sometimes we may come across combination of the different types of motions for example when a train is moving the wheels they provide us the circular motion they move along circular path they ro- they uh, continue to evolve whereas the train has linear motion and so do the wheels wheels move along straight path along the track and they also are in circular motion let us learn easier case of motion of objects along straight line first such motion can be expressed in terms of simple equations and graphs to describe location of an object we need to specify a reference point for the purpose let us take an example suppose a school in a village is 2 km north of the railway station this information specifies position of the school with respect to the railway station the railway station here has been chosen as the reference point and position of the school has been specified with respect to the station choice of reference point can be different depending on your convenience the reference point here the railway station is called the origin the simplest type of motion is the motion along a straight line and we term it as linear motion or rectilinear motion as stated earlier let us consider motion of an object which is linear to describe the motion take point o as a reference point or the origin as you have in the figure the object starts its journey from point o let a b and c represents positions of this object at different dis- instances of time at first the object starts from point o moves through c towards right here o to a it is passing through c and b and reaching point a then it moves back along the same path and reaches c through b so first motion is o to a through c and b and second motion is a to c through point b the total path length as you can see from the diagram is oa plus ac oa as you can see is 80 meter and ac is 80 minus 30 or 50 meter the total distance or path length is 130 meter this gives the distance covered by the object 
to describe distance we specify only numerical value and not the direction of motion we are not talking about right or left or east or west we are just finding the length of the path which in this case is 130 meter in physics there are certain quantities which are described by specifying their magnitude or numerical value alone as in case of distance such quantities are called scalars physical quantities that is the quantities which we can measure which are described by magnitude alone without taking direction into consideration they are called scalar quantities or simply scalars mass length volume are such quantities because when we talk about mass say 5 kilogram 2 kilogram there is no direction involved such quantities are termed as scalars from the diagram you can also find out the shortest distance of the final position c of the object from the reference point or origin or the initial position o the difference gives magnitude of final displacement of the object from its initial position. Let us have a close look at the diagram. The particle or the object started from point O and finally it reached C. The shortest distance from this initial point to the final point is OC. This is termed as displacement O to C we will not call it C O it is O to C that is it has the direction also. also the final position is C right of the initial point O that is the displacement is 30 meter from O and right of O. In general the magnitude of displacement between two points is less than the distance covered by the object. The displacement here refers to distance plus the direction. The magnitude of displacement can be equal to the distance only in a special case that is when the object follows a straight path. So let us see what is the condition for magnitude of displacement to be equal to distance traveled by an object. As stated earlier the two are equal only in a special case. What is the sp special case? When the object moves from O to A distance covered is 80 and magnitude of displacement is also 80 meter. This implies that magnitude of displacement S is equal to distance S because the body or the object is moving along a straight path OA. So we repeat magnitude of displacement S is equal to the distance S if and only if a particle moves between two points along a linear or a straight path. The displacement of a body will be zero if it returns to the starting point, but the distance may not be zero. For example, if a particle starts from O goes to A and comes back to O, the distance covered will be 80 plus 80 160 meter but the displacement will be 0. So returning to starting point displacement is 0 but distance is not 0. Two different quantities that is distance covered and displacement are used to describe motion of an object. The distance does not give us the final position whereas displacement helps us to locate the final position of the object. The quantities like displacement which have both magnitude as well as direction are called vectors. We repeat the quantities which have only magnitude no direction are scalars. 
the quantities which have both magnitude and direction they will be termed as vectors. Here are a few problems for your practice. To continue the study further there are two different types of motions which an object can have uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Let us consider an object moving along a straight path. Suppose it travels 5 meter in first second, 5 meter in the next second, 5 meter in the third second and 5 meter in fourth second and so on. In this case the object covers 5 meters in each second. Such objects which cover equal distances in equal intervals of time are said to be in uniform motion. However, an important thing which we need to remember for motion to be uniform is that the time interval and the motion should be small. To clarify this, let us consider motion of a car. Supposing we sit in a car and after one hour we see the reading we have covered 60 kilometer. And the next hour again we cover a distance of 60 kilometer. So, in first hour the car covered 60 kilometer, in next hour it again covered 60 kilometer, but it does not imply that the motion of the car was uniform. For example, it may have covered 40 kilometer in first half an hour, 20 in next half an hour, making it a total of 60 kilometers. So, motion within the first hour was non-uniform, but if you take hour the longer period it appears to be uniform. So, in order to have motion strictly as uniform motion, the time intervals should be small that is every minute the car should cover 1 kilometer, every second it should cover same distance and so on. In daily life in general objects cover unequal distances in equal intervals of time. Such motion is termed as non-uniform motion. So, a motion of object is said to be non-uniform if it covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time. Some examples of non-uniform motion are a car moving on a crowded street, a person jogging in a car also has non-uniform motion. Let us take the examples of motion from this table. There are two objects object A and object B. The distances covered in different time inter intervals at different instances of time are shown in column A for object A and col third column for object B. As you can see, if you look at the distance traveled by object A in meters, at 9.30 the distance was 10 meter, 9.45, 20 meter, 10 am, 30 meter and so on. That is every 15 minutes the object is covering 10 meter. Such motion can be termed as uniform motion. However, the distances covered by object B are different in equal intervals of 15 minutes that is 12 to 19 which means 7 meter, 19 to 23 means 4 meters, 23 to 35 is 12 meters and so on. So, object A is in uniform motion whereas, object B is essentially in non-uniform motion because object A is covering equal distances in equal intervals of time whereas, B is covering unequal distances in equal intervals of time. Different objects may take different time to cover same distance because some move fast while others move slowly. 
the rates at which objects move can be widely different. That is why we make, we make use of faster means of transportation to so that the journey takes lesser time. Different objects can also move at the same rate. In order to measure the rate of motion of an object, we find the distance traveled by the object in a unit time. The distance traveled by an object in unit time is called speed. Larger the speed, faster the motion. So, in physics we define speed of an object as rate of motion or the distance covered per unit time. The SI unit of speed is meter per second. It is represented by the symbols m s minus 1 or meter per second. The symbols are on the screen. There are other units than meter per second because meter per second is SI unit. Other units are centimeter per second, kilometer per hour, etc. Here we have talked about the distance per unit time without considering the direction of motion. So, speed is a scalar quantity. To specify speed of an object, we need only magnitude and not direction. The speed of an object may or may not be constant. In general, the objects are in non-uniform motion. We have earlier considered examples of a jogging man or a car on a crowded street which may be faster at some for some interval and slower for the others. So, generally the objects are in non-uniform motion. The rate of motion of objects moving with changing speed is expressed in terms of average speed. So, if objects continue to change their speed, we calculate average speed of an object. The average speed of an object is the ratio of the total distance traveled by the object to the total time taken. Put mathematically, average speed V average or V A V, A V used as subscript is total distance divided by total time equal to S over T where s denotes the distance and t the time. So, ratio s over t total distance divided by total time is called average speed. The formula for average speed is on your screen total distance traveled divided by total time taken. So, for an object traveling a distance s in time t, the average speed v a v is s over t. Let us take an example. A car travels a distance of 100 kilometers in 2 hours. The average speed will be ratio of distance that is 100 kilometer to total time 2 hours that is it will be 50 kilometer per hour. The car may not have traveled at this speed all the time. For example, in first hour it might have covered 60 kilometer, in second hour it might have covered 40 kilometer making it a total distance of 100 kilometer in 2 hours. Another example, an object travels 16 meter in 4 seconds and another 16 meter in 2 seconds, what is the average speed of the object? For solution, let us take find out the total distance. Total distance is 16 meter in first part and 16 in the second part, so making it a total of 32 meters. The total time taken is 4 seconds for the first part, 2 seconds for the second part, that is 6 seconds. Average speed we can calculate using the relevant formula total distance traveled over total time taken that is 32 meter divided by total time 6 seconds that gives you 5.33 meter per second. Thus, average speed 
of the object is 5.33 meter per second. Once again we emphasize that the object has not moved at this speed for all the time. The study of motion of an object becomes more comprehensive, we have more information about the motion if the direction of motion is also specified. So, in addition to rate of motion of an object, we also specify the direction of its motion. The quantity which specifies both the rate of motion that is speed and the direction of motion is called velocity. So, velocity is the speed of an object in a specified direction. Velocity is hence defined as the distance covered per unit time by an object in a specified direction. Speed therefore, is a scalar and in contrast velocity is a vector quantity. Alternately, we can also define velocity as the displacement of an object per unit time. Velocity of an object can be uniform that is constant or variable. Velocity being a vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. So, we can change velocity by changing the speed or direction or both. If an object is moving along a straight path with a variable speed, we can find its average velocity as the ratio of total displacement to total time. If s vector denotes the displacement and t the time, we have average velocity equal to ratio of displacement vector s over time t. In a special case where velocity of an object is changing at a constant rate or uniform rate that is changing by equal amount in equal intervals of time. We can find average velocity as the mean of the initial velocity u and final velocity v that is v a v is equal to u plus v over 2, but only in a specific case where the rate of change of velocity is constant. Speed and velocity they have same units, the SI units for both speed as well as velocity are meter per second. Here is an activity suggested for you, during thunder and lightning we hear sound much later than the sight of the lightning. The reason for the time difference is the light travels much faster as compared to the sound. You can when lightning occurs you can use a stopwatch or a digital wristwatch to measure the time gap and find out the distance at which the lightning has occurred. Take speed of the sound in air as 350 meter per second. So, you have to multiply the speed 350 meter per second by the time elapsed which you have recorded by using the stopwatch or digital wristwatch. The product of the two will give you the distance at which the lightning has occurred. Let us take an example, the odometer of a car reads 2000 kilometer at start of a journey and 2400 kilometer at the end of the journey or the trip. The trip takes an overall 8 hours, you have to find out the average speed in kilometer per hour and meter per second. Here the distance covered is 400 kilometer and time taken is 8 hours, you can by using simple formula for average speed 400 kilometer over 8, the speed comes out to be 50 kilometer per hour or 13.9 meter per second. Another example, Usha swims in a 90 meter long pool covering 180 meter in 1 minute by swimming from one end to the other 
and coming back along the same straight path. You have to find the average speed and average velocity. We know by formula the average speed is total distance covered that is 180 meter divided by the total time that is 1 minute or 60 seconds. So, the average speed comes out to be 3 meter per second. On the other hand, the average velocity is ratio of total displacement to total time and since Usha has returned to the starting point, the uh, total displacement will be 0 meter giving us the average velocity as 0 meter per second. Here are a few problems for you to practice and the revise the, con the concepts which you have learnt in this video. Thanks for watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as the website for further notification about the new lessons and videos. You may send your feedback to the email id you have on your screen. Wish you a happy learning. Thank you so much.